All right, we are continuing with Buzzard Day, but uh, this is the kind that doesn't poop on you, so I'm very excited. They used to say, if you made it in Cleveland, you could make it anywhere. Well, that was at the time when the Buzzard, also known as WMMS, was so big it was known from coast to coast. Welcome John Gorman, author of The Buzzard, Inside the Glory Days of WMMS and Cleveland Rock Radio. Welcome to oh, you. Thank you for having me. What a coincidence that you would show up here on Buzzard Day. This it's, is perfect. It's, it's just a flashback every it's, year. You know. it's, uh, it is, it is. Boy, you talk about glory days of radio um, for, for uh, explain what WMMS was back in the day for, for people who uh, don't know. It was, uh, it was a rock and roll station that uh, broke a lot of music. Uh, now, when you say broke a lot of music, it's not like uh, people breaking up stuff in hotel not, rooms. Not breaking things, well, that too, that yeah, too. Yeah, that, that, that goes sure along that with happened. it. But a lot of acts like Bruce Springsteen, Roxy Music, Fleetwood Mac all started. They broke out of Cleveland before they had national success. Really? Now, is that because they would play it on WMMS, or would they come through, or how did no, all well, that work? We, we were the kind, we, we were a young, renegade FM radio station, just played what we wanted to play. Because you came here from Boston, yeah, right? Yeah, I came from Boston. In what year? Uh, 73. 1973. Yep. Okay, and you went, and, and so... WMMS at that time was? Uh, well, if you looked at a ratings book and you turned it upside down, we'd be number one. I mean, it was last place. Okay. FM and Find Me back then. And yeah. we just. Yeah, because there weren't, that was, more people listened to AM? Yeah, more people saying FM was an option. You couldn't buy okay. a, a car. I mean, you couldn't buy a, a car radios only had AM. You had to buy these little FM converters and install them back in so those days. So it's kind of like serious today. Yeah. In except, a way. except it was better. Yeah, yeah, it was. Because, <laughs> because you had real people. Yeah, we had real people, yeah. and and uh, yeah, a lot of people who were just out of college, college radio, and uh, we were just given this radio station, and uh, nobody bothered us. So we put together this this crazy radio station, played music we felt that people wanted to hear, and it just took off. It did take off. Now, um, I, because I came here in 1986, and you say that was when it was beginning to, to die out a little well, bit? Well, it was still, it's, it still had a lot of life. In fact, yeah. 1986 was probably our biggest year. Okay. In terms of uh, ratings-wise, I mean, th there, was, there was us, and then you have to go Wait, uh, yeah. way yeah. down the list to find number two. Um, but the, the people who were on the air then, um, walk us down that lane. Oh, uh, Jeff and Flash, uh, and the Buzzard Morning Zoo in the morning. We had Matt the Cat. Kidley in the afternoons, yeah. Denny Sanders, Betty Corvin, a uh, person named BLF Bash, one of the greatest all-night people in the country, and uh, Murray Saul, who would do the Get Down every Friday, and uh, oh, Dia Stein. There were so many. And Father people. Guido Sarducci, is that who that is on the That's right? That's Father or who Guido Sarducci. Yeah, he was. He was. He was there for two days taking our confession. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think two days would cover it. No, two days Probably wouldn't cover not. it. Well, he just, he just asked for a you know, quick overview. Yeah. Now, um, um, so what would happen on a Friday night on WMMS? Well, at that, that was interesting. Uh, uh, it, it's a long story. The story's in the book. But Murray Saul at that time was in his late 40s, early 50s, uh, probably the average age of most of our listeners' parents. Uh -huh. And he'd come out at 6 o'clock and bring in the weekend in such a bizarre and crazy way that uh, it broke every rule in the book. And uh, he, was, he was telling people what to do on the weekend. It was exactly the opposite of what their parents were telling them to do. Really? Well, Kevin Salyer said he always looked forward to that 6 o'clock oh, announcement, it, so now, it, we, know, it, it, now it, we know why. It, that's, that's why that's, he corrupted Kevin like everybody else. <laughs> In fact, today, Murray is getting a hip replacement. Murray is 82 years old now. Oh, my gosh. Still alive and well and crazy and still doing the same things he was doing back then. And getting a hip replacement. And he's getting a hip replacement because, uh, well, we well when you're doing the same things you were doing back then, you need a hip replacement. You, yes, you do. <laughs> now, now, you say that WMMS actually brought people back downtown. In well, it did. It, it brought people back downtown. Downtown was dead. In fact, Playhouse Square, they were looking at ready, ready to tear it down. And what brought people back into the city were the rock concerts. Mm -hmm. And we started doing rock concerts multiple times a week. And we also had the Agora at East 24th, uh, right behind Cleveland State back then. And all of these rock concerts were bringing young people back downtown. And it was the first sign of life that you were getting. Playhouse Square had not been rehabbed yet. It was just in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Allen Theater was open. You had Music Hall, you had Public Hall, and you had the Agora. And those venues 
brought people back downtown to see rock concerts. And back then it was Roxy Music, Alex Harvey Band, Bruce Springsteen. Wow. Uh, they were all playing, you know, the Allen Theater Music Hall, the Public Hall, David Bowie, another one. And uh, that, and then when we started doing the World Series of Rock, those were the years the Indians weren't doing very well. When you go to an Indians game, you see, you know, a thousand people. You'd go to the World Series of Rock and you'd have 88,000 people. Wow. So it, it, maybe it really brought bring people that back. back. Uh, who knows? You know, there's, there's there's a new radio station in town that they may they may do it. And I know people are really surprised to yes yes. <laughs> well, I want to talk about that in a second. Okay. But um, people are really surprised to know that that back back in those days there was such a huge divide between east and west, and it's not so much anymore. Yeah. Well, but back then, you know, I ninety was uh, you know it, it it connects Boston with Seattle. The only unfinished part of I ninety was in Cleveland. <laughs> I mean, that was the problem. 480 wasn't finished. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the only thing, uh, I 70, uh, even I 77, you had to get off at, what was it, Cuyahoga Falls, and then you had to get back, uh, Cuyahoga Heights, then get back on in Independence. You, you literally yeah. could not get from the east side to the west side. You couldn't even get from downtown to the south side that easily. It was crazy. And I knew more people on the east side had been to New York than had been to, you know, let's say Bay Village or Westlake. And people on the west side, I knew more people had been to Chicago yeah. than been to, you know, Mayfield Heights or Cleveland Heights. Well, it's a great read. It's a great read. And, and uh, we are going to give your book away. But first, you, uh, I discovered, I don't know, somebody called me or texted me and said, you've got to listen to 107.3, um, maybe a, a couple months ago. And uh, you're involved in that, and we, we've known it as the wave, but now it is... Now it is V107.3, the V is whatever you want it to be, but it's actually because call us a WNWV. Right. We couldn't think of anything else, so we just decided to call it V. We have real but people on there. Yeah, we have real people on the air. It's independently owned and operated. It's not part of a major chain. And, That's uh, very rare these days. And also, it's doing something else that hasn't been done for a while. It has a playlist that is very, very long and getting longer by the moment, and it's a combination of uh, the best new music and also a lot of the old Cleveland favorites that yeah. just don't get played on Cleveland radio because Cleveland radio isn't owned by Cleveland people anymore. Yeah. It's, it's a great radio station, so um, check it out. And uh, thank, thank you, you for uh, uh, writing the book and giving us an autographed copy to give away. It is uh, by author John Gorman, The Buzzard, Inside the Glory Days of WMMS and Cleveland Rock. Uh, we will give a uh, copy to, are we going for, uh, no, the first caller to name one of the radio personalities that John referred to um, in this segment, 216-578-0888. Good luck to you. And John Gorman, thank you so Robin, much. Thank you. And we hope you'll stick around because we'll be right back. Robin she got you locked in the AM.